So Unity just released their new huge demo project, and it's called the FPS Sample Project. It's a vertical slice of a AAA quality multiplayer FPS, which is designed to give an insight into how a fairly small team of six people can create high-end network games using Unity. The entire project is available for download right now, and it's pretty big. It's got one complete level, two rigged characters, four weapons, deathmatch and assault game modes, and also, what's this? No, but in all seriousness, the graphics for this game are absolutely amazing. So why put this thing in? But really, crosshairs aside, it's a really cool project. Also, we have an announcement. So for a long time now, we've been getting a lot of requests to do one particular thing. And after a lot of waiting, it's finally here. We have Bracky's merch! Woo! Yay! <laughs> 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 What? Bracky's merch? Bracky's merch. <laughs> yeah, we have Bracky's merch, guys. But in fact, we're not only making Bracky's merch. We're launching a full featured store for all kinds of game dev related clothing. It's called Line of Code and it's live now at lineofcode.io. And of course, it has a dark mode. We currently have two designs on there. One is, of course, the Bracky's logo, and the other one is a cool custom design made by our amazing artist Thea for all of you game jammers out there. So far, we're just testing this thing out. Everything is, of course, super early, but we're definitely planning to add more designs as we go. So stay tuned for that. And because the store is completely new, we're having an opening sale, so you can get everything at a discount. We just feel like something like this has been lacking, and we're hoping you guys will like it as much as we do. There's, of course, a link in the description to where you can check it out. Now, I believe that the sample project is made using a bunch of custom netcode. I'm not entirely sure if there's some UNet in there as well. Unity hasn't really been too clear about this, but I do know that it's built on an authoritative server architecture. For the characters, we have this cool robot who has a minigun and a grenade launcher, and Tracer has received a helmet as well as a machine gun and rocket launcher. Also, a really cool thing about this project is that it's under continuous development. Unity isn't just dropping it and then leaving it. Instead, the team behind the project is planning to update it and add more features as we go. So enough talking about the project, how do you actually start using it? Well, let's go through it step by step. So the first thing we need to do is go to the FPS sample on GitHub and from here we need to clone the project. If you've never cloned a project of GitHub before, I'll make sure to have a link in the description to where you can learn how to do that. Also, since some of the files in this project are so large, you need to use git large file support or LFS. If you don't already have this installed, make sure to follow this link to download it. Once you've cloned the project to your computer, you need to go and check here to see what Unity version you will need to download. Currently this supports 2018.3 beta 6, so I've gone ahead and downloaded this Unity version. And from there you can open up the project in Unity. This is going to take quite a while the first time. Now there's a few setup steps that we need to do in order to make our project run properly. And the first one is actually because of a bug in the 2018.3 beta. If you're using later versions, you can maybe skip this step. But for now, we actually need to go ahead and re-import a bunch of assets. So let's go in here and search for all prefabs by going T and then colon prefab. Let's select the first one, scroll to the bottom, select all of them, right click and hit re-import. And again, this might take some time. Then once that's done, we need to do the same thing for models. So we'll search for T colon models. And let's go to the top, select the first one, go to the bottom, shift select the last one, right click, and again, re-import. And this is probably gonna take even longer. And that should be it for setup. We now go under FPS sample, windows, and open up the project tools. And this is going to be the main window for opening different scenes and running the game. Let's go ahead and dock it over here by the inspector. And as you can see, there are a few different levels in here. Level one is the main level that you've seen some footage of. Level menu is of course the main menu from where you can create and find games. And level zero is what we refer to as a white box level. This is basically a much smaller level that is made up of placeholder assets so that it's much easier to run and play test in. Let's go ahead and open up that now by pressing the open button here. And it's then gonna load in all the assets and open up all the scenes that make up this level. And when the level is loaded, it might look really weird like this. I found that for some reason in the scene view, you have to enable post-processing up here in order for it to actually show. And for me, the first time that I did this, the scene actually just changed from white to black. The solution to this was pretty simple. I simply hit play in order to try and run the game in preview mode. And after a bit of waiting, this should take us into play mode where we can now run through and actually play the game. And as you can see, it works with shooting. We have movement in here. There's double jumping. We even have this cool rocket launcher. And yeah, the game is working just fine. 
So if we go to the top here and stop playing, you can see how we can pretty easily go in and configure different parts of our scene here. Say we wanted to move around this prop here, we would simply do so and we can hit play and preview our changes. In our project panel, there are also a bunch of prefabs. These are split into different categories like cameras, characters, environment, gameplay and so forth. We could, for example, go under characters, then go under our terraformer. And in here, we actually have a scriptable object where if we look in the inspector, we can configure different things about this character. In fact, we can also open up any of these prefabs and edit them. Or we could go under, say, the grenade here and double click on the robot grenade to open it up in the prefab manager. And in here, we have different settings such as the gravity as well as the damage that our grenade will inflict. So to configure the game, I really recommend you play around with the environment itself inside of the scene view and go under the prefabs folder in the project in order to change settings. I think you'll learn a lot from just playing around with it. Of course, we can also go to project tools and open up our level one here. So let's hit open. And I'm not gonna save any of my changes here. And again, this will probably take a little while. And we're now inside of the main level. We can go ahead and select our main camera here and hit F to focus on it. And this might make your computer lag a bit since we're loading in a bunch of assets. And you can see how many gizmos are actually drawing here. Let's go to the FPS symbol. Let's go under hotkeys and let's hit toggle gizmos or simply press control G. And I found that I actually needed to do this twice. There we go. So now our scene looks much cleaner and you can see already that my FPS has certainly been improved quite a bit. So this is what the main level looks like inside of the editor. And just like with level zero, we can go ahead and preview it by simply hitting play. But since this is a multiplayer game, it would make more sense if we could build two versions of the game and see them running side by side. To do this, we need to make sure to first build our asset bundles. And we can do this using the project tools. Let's go to the right here and hit all. And this is another one of those where you'll probably have to wait a bit. And once that's done, we can go ahead and build the game. So now all of the files necessary in order to run our game should be created. We've set up our project, we've created the asset bundles, we've built the game. And don't worry, when you do this in the future, it's gonna be much, much faster. But what we're now able to do is use this quick start down here in order to quickly boot up clients and test out the game. As you can see, we can choose what mode, whether we want to play multiplayer or single player. We can choose what level we wanna start, how many clients we want to open up. In my case, I'm just gonna open two test clients as well as a server. So if we press the green start button here, it's actually quickly going to open up two windows and I'm just gonna resize these to fit these better on screen. And as you can see, both of these are actually running the game and each player has spawned in a separate location with a different character. You will also see that it opens a third window. This is a console window and this is actually just a very, very, very tiny version of the game without any assets in it that is running the server. So now we can go in and play around in any of these builds and we should actually be able to meet each other in game. And there we go. We can now see the two characters working together in multiplayer. We can damage each other, shoot them with different guns and there's even a scoreboard that we can bring up to always see what the score is. Pretty cool. And one of the really cool things we can do when playing around with the game and testing is using the console. So if we press F1 here, it's gonna bring up the console window and in here we can type different commands. If you're unsure about what commands you have at your disposal, you can always type help and get a list of them. For example, we could force a respawn here by typing in respawn or we could shift to third person mode by typing in third person. And you can see this client is now running in third person and the game is still fully playable. I'll have a link in the description for a more detailed list for all of the different console commands. Now to shut down the game again, we can go back to the Unity editor and hit stop all. And it's gonna close all of the running instances of the game. And just like with our white box scene, we can go in and move and change objects in this level. And any changes we made inside of our project window, such as to prefabs or scriptable objects, are of course going to carry over between levels. Remember that every time you make a change to a level, you need to rebuild the level's asset bundles. And every time you make a change to an asset, such as a prefab, we need to rebuild the assets. If you add any new objects, you need to press the update registry button. And of course, if you're in doubt, you can always press all. Of course, the final scene that we need to check out is the menu. So let's go ahead and open that up. I'm not gonna save any of these changes. And this is gonna load much quicker, both because it's a much smaller level, but also because Unity is now starting to cache a lot of these things behind the scenes. If we just try and play this inside of the editor, we can see that it's a fully working menu with a nice intro animation. 
And from here we can create games and join games and we can even configure settings under options. Awesome! Of course there are so much here that we haven't shown, this is just scratching the surface of how to start working with the project. I really recommend you look through the entire project folder and have a look at what scripts are there, what assets make up the project and all the different prefabs that you can configure. And also there are so many custom tools built for this project to make your life easier. Of course you can find all of these under FPS sample and they've been nicely grouped into different categories. So from here, it's really up to you to play around with it and have fun. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. And definitely check out Line of Code. Simply click the link in the description and go visit. Or you can just go to lineofcode.io. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November. And a special thanks to Make a Game, Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Alexander Blair, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Sheriff Abdullah, Chris, Faisal Marify, Thanks for Long, Leo Lasset, Clinton Fanskewer, Stray SD, Ronin, Bruins Cat, Naoki Iwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, Kill Swedish Key, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Corey Jackson, Pacom Bernier, Robert Bund, Erasmus, Anthony Patton, Obrisi, James P., Tima Folderbach, John Shannon, Alex Jarotsky, Travis Dillon, Rudy Andrevanto, and Carsten Suerland. You guys rock!